thinking they're on the way to heaven. The Lord in this text, he is calibrating his word for the disciples and for us to understand the gravity, the seriousness of how we respond to the word of God and how we allow the word of God to shape the way we think and what we value and as the word of God shapes the way we think and the word of God shapes what we value, then it will shape the way we live our lives. Now, this was intended not to be to depress them, but to encourage them. It was to encourage them to know that as long as they were sowing the good seed of the word of God, that they would stumble across good hearts, good soil. And the good soil that they would scatter the word, broadcast the word, and plant the word in the hearts of the good soil, it would bring forth more fruit than could have been brought forth from what was perceived to be the bad soil. Are you following him? It was to encourage them that they might know that their work, that their labor was not in vain. That our labor and our work and our efforts to try to share our faith, to tell people about Jesus Christ, to plant and to sow and to broadcast the seed of the word of God, though we may often become discouraged because there appears to be such a lack of interest, such a lack of response. Now, I know that y'all don't play the lottery, but if y'all did play the lottery, you could play the lottery a whole lot of times and not win nothing. But if you hit just one, <laughs> if you hit it just one time, then you get a return so large on your investment that it calls all the other investments to pale into insignificance. What Jesus is saying here, that the shine of our faith, the sowing of the seed, it is not a happenstance or a game of chance. He's saying, I have planted people out there whose hearts are good soil. You just keep broadcasting the seed and it is going to land in good soil and it is going to bring forth fruit. And that was to be an encouragement to them, an encouragement to them to not give up, to not become discouraged, to not to allow themselves to be disheartened by the lack of numbers. That the way God calculates and the way God does things, that God can have exponential fruit born by the seed that we sow. So that's the idea here. And the idea was also to encourage them to know that they themselves, that their heart was proof, it was positive that there was good soil. And the fact that their lives were bringing forth fruit was a testament to the quality of the seed of the word of God. Well, let me move this thing forward before we wrap it up. That's the parable of the soil. The second parable deals with the parable of the lamp. Verse 21 through 25. He said to them, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or on a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there's nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, secret but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, take heed what you hear. The same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to hear more will be given, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So in this brief parable of the lampstand, Jesus is encouraging his disciples and he's encouraging us to understand that it is no small thing for us to receive and be open to God's word. God's word is the lampstand, the lamp that cannot be hidden. It illuminates, it brings light. And when we hear what God has to say to us, God will give more to us. And as God gives more to us, it will equip us to be more effective in serving him. And we will see the change and the transformation taking place in our own lives. That is the way that God will often encourage us. It is the inward transformation that is taking place inside of us that strengthens our resolve and then encourage us to let us know that we have not believed in vain. That it's not a fairy tale, but that it's really real. And if others are not responding to the gospel, we are not discouraged because we know that God is changing us and the change of the word of God is bringing in our lives become the source of encouragement to propel us to continue to persevere. And he will give us more. 
The third parable is the parable of the mystery of the seed that grows, verse 26 through 29. And he said, the kingdom of God is as a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night, rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. This parable deals with the mystery of the potency and the seed of the word of God. He says a man goes out and he plants and he goes and goes to sleep somewhere and he wakes up one day and then something has popped up out of the ground. A seed that he may have even forgotten all about. It has come up out of the ground. That is the mystery of the seed. That the power is in the seed itself. The power is not in the soil. The power is in the seed itself. The word of God has its own power. And as we by faith are faithful to share what we know about the word of God, to encourage other people to consider the word of God, seeds are being planted in the hearts of people. And we may not even be around when God decides to bring forth the fruit in that life. That's the mystery of the seed. That we don't know when and we don't know how and we don't know to what degree God is going to bring forth seeds out of people's lives. And that's the way we have to look at ministry. Now let me be honest with y'all. If somebody would have told me that when I started preaching 25 years ago, If somebody would have told me when I started pastoring 25 years ago, that 25 years later, you probably have maybe 125, 150 people show up any given Sunday morning. That's about the best you're going to have. I would say, you have got to be kidding me. 25 years after 25 years, I may have quit 25 years ago. But that's why God does not tell us what is in the future. Because if we know what is in the future, then we might try to use the present to alter the future and not be true and not be faithful to the task at hand. But however, there is a mystery to the seed of the word of God, and that's what this church has to understand. Those of you who who are embarked on this journey of faith to establish the Grace Bible Church some 30 years ago, give or take a couple of days, If somebody would have told y'all 30 years ago, after 30 some years, y'all gonna have maybe a buck 25, maybe a buck 50 that's gonna show up on any given Sunday morning. Y'all would have said, I can't believe you're gonna tell that that's all we're gonna have to show for 30 years of ministry. And you could have been discouraged. But don't be discouraged. (laughs) Because there is a mystery in the sea that you don't always see. And the things that God is doing, that God does not inform us about, that he does not reveal to us, but God is scattering seed from the Grace Bible Church all over the United States of America and even abroad. And so when you take in consideration, there's Faith Dugan up in Brooklyn, New York, ministering to hundreds of children through Child Evangelism Fellowship who was discipled here at the Grace Bible Church who has been supported by the Grace Bible Church for the last 25 some years. That is seed that God has taken to a whole nother area where there's a whole lot of different types of soil and the word is God is being planted and we don't get a round by round recap of what God is choosing to do but God is bringing forth a harvest through other ministries that he's chosen to either give birth to at the Grace Bible Church or individuals. When you consider what Corey Robinson and Dee Robinson are doing down in Atlanta, Georgia, ministering the word of God to young people in the juvenile detention and the correctional facilities and in the community where they live, it's here they were discipled and nurtured by the grace of God and God chose to remove them and take them to another place. God is sowing seed. And the mystery of the seed has been planted in the hearts of people. And I could go on and on, item, item, infinitum, acknowledging Glenn Walker up in Connecticut, all over the place. And all the places around Hartford and Bridgeport and Manson, all these places, ministering the word of God, calling Mrs. Day. I don't even know it. I went up to see Glenn and Marcel some weeks ago. He got a bunch of tapes and videos and CDs he'd gotten from the church. He gave to young people he was working 